My name's David, and the chronological Bible reading for June 2nd is Song of Songs, also known as Song of Solomon. There are eight chapters in today's reading. It's the entire book, and it's written by Solomon as an allegory, depicting the relationship between God and his church. This is corroborated in Ephesians 5, verses 22 through the end of the chapter, where Paul compares marriage between a man and a woman as a portrayal of the mystery between Jesus and the body of Christ. There are a few different speakers in addition to a narrator in this book. The woman is us, it's believers, and the man could be God himself or Jesus, the lover of our souls. There are young women who would be like immature believers, followers, who are curious, but maybe not very discerning. As you're reading this book, pay very close attention to who is speaking, and you'll see a dialogue emerge between the woman and the man with interjections from young women. And essentially what we see coming together is the script of a play, which is the greatest love story ever told. When you're reading the words of the woman, compare it to how you as a believer feel about God himself. How you hunger for him, you want to be close to him, you're willing to search high and low and go wherever he is going. But at the same time, as you're reading the words from the man, understand that this is God's heart for you. If you belong to him, this is God's heart for you. In verse 8, he says, most beautiful of women. And it's a reminder that you are his favorite. In verse 15, how beautiful you are, my darling. How very beautiful. In chapter 2, verse 2, to him, your God, you are like a lily in the midst of thorns. He sees your beauty unlike anyone else around you, unmatched by those around you. You are special and his eyes are for you and for you alone. He says in verse 10, arise, my darling, come away with me. He longs to be alone with you, to have your attention not to share you with anyone else. Again, in chapter 4, how beautiful you are, my darling. How very beautiful. In verse 7, he says, there is no imperfection in you. You have captured my heart with one glance of your eyes. And in chapter 6, verse 10, and in chapter 6, verse 10, he says, who is this who shines like the dawn? as beautiful as the moon, bright as the sun, awe-inspiring as an army with banners. This is God speaking about his love for you, comparing you to the light of the moon and the sun. Your maker finds such beauty in you that in chapter 6 verse 5 he says to you, turn your eyes away from me, for they captivate me. Have you ever looked at someone, your spouse or your child, with such love and affection that you have to stop looking at them because if you don't, you'll not get anything else done. You'll not be able to think about anything else. You'll not be able to talk about anything else. You'll be completely captivated and undone because of the overwhelming love that is welling up within you. You just have to take a deep breath and turn away. That's how Jesus feels about you. The last time in chapter 8 we hear the voice of the man, he says to the woman, let me hear you. How fitting that he comes for her and he says, the very last thing he says is, let me hear you. I long to hear your voice. As we follow the voice and the words of the woman through this book, remember again that this is us. And it's a very emotional book. It's, it could be considered very erotic if you look at all of the imagery and you think of it in a sexual way. And it does, in a sexual way, represent the union between a man and a woman in marriage. But it's so much more than that. It's 
the love that we share with our Messiah, with our God. Have any of you ever prayed, Jesus, take me with you? Do you think the disciples on the day Jesus was being crucified, part of them were mourning that he was leaving them and they wanted to be with him in paradise? Do you think any of them were jealous of the thief on the cross who died with Jesus that day? Take me with you. This life gets hard, and yet we have been given an assignment here. And so even in the beginning of chapter 1, where the woman in this book is saying, Jesus, take me with you, we have an entire story to get through first. In chapter 5, we see the sadness and desperation of the woman, who again is us, because it appears as though her groom came for her while she was sleeping. In verse 2, I was sleeping, but my heart was awake. A sound, my love was knocking. The man says, open the door. And the woman responds, I've taken off my clothing. How can I put it back on? I've washed my feet. How can I get them dirty? The picture is she's in bed waiting for her husband. He's knocking at the door. And perhaps she doesn't want to get out of bed to go and open the door. And in verse 6, when she does open the door... He had turned and gone away, and her heart sinks because he had left, and she looks for him but did not find him, and she calls for him, but he did not answer. And then the guards who go about the city found her and beat her and wounded her. They take her cloak, and then she calls to the younger women, If you find my love, tell him that I am lovesick, that I'm desperate. There's nothing else that can possibly satisfy and sometimes we don't realize how much we love someone until we, were, until we are faced with the possibility of losing them. The young women don't understand. They say, why is he better than anyone else? Don't be so upset. There's, there's lots of guys around. And so the woman goes into this description of the beauty and the might and the wonder of the man she loves. And in chapter 6, verse 3, even while she's still searching for him and their marriage has not been consummated, she says, I am my love's and my love is mine. She remains, she remains devoted to him. They are reunited and you could say they live happily ever after. When Jesus returns for us in physical form, soon and very soon it shall be, we will be reunited with him. There will be a great feast called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we will be with him forever. Praise his holy name. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me through the word of God in 2024. I pray that this is helpful in your walk with the Lord. And if you'd like to go deeper, join us live on Sunday mornings. And at our prayer gatherings, as for now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 Eastern, more information available at BibleInOrder.com. We'll see you tomorrow.